Anus. No, dude, it's honest. A N I S. Anus. Okay, stop being immature. It's honest. Like, honest, but without the T at the end. Anus. Oh my fucking god. Alright, look. Her full name's Anisphia. So maybe if you say that instead. Oh, okay. Alright, you understand now? So, anus sniffer then. Wanna have sex? Yeah. Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. My name is YouTube channel and welcome back or to my disaster. So the winter 2023 season is officially over now, meaning that a lot of new anime are concluding and a lot of newer anime have started airing. I've actually been looking forward to quite a few of the spring 2023 anime, so um, expect some videos on those sometime in the future. But for now, I wanted to take a look back at some recent anime and review them. And the particular anime I'll be talking about today is The Magical Revolution of the Reincarnated Princess and the Genius Young Lady. That's all one title. Um, I'm not talking about multiple anime, that is the title. I have a lot to say about this show, and I'm very excited to talk about it, but the first thing I wanted to do was thank you guys for helping me hit well over 100 views on my Bochi the Rock video. It genuinely means so much to me, um, and it was really nice to see such positive reception to that video because I worked really hard on it. Uh, if you haven't seen that one, I can link it down in the description in case you want to watch it. Uh, no pressure though. But that's enough stalling, so without further ado, let's get into the review. Shit, that actually has a pretty nice ring to it, and it rhymes. I should start saying that in my future videos. Let me just make a note of that really. Actually, I'm not going to make a note of that. <laughs> I just wing everything on this fucking channel. So, this anime is actually an isekai one, hence the long ass title. However, the isekai aspect of the series takes a backseat to the rest of the show because first and foremost, it's a GL. I normally avoid BL and GL anime because finding a good one is a pretty big gamble. You might end up with a really great show, like Sasuke and Miyano, or you might end up with Love Stage and regret your life choices. Luckily though, this is not one of the weird ones. I normally avoid isekai anime due to them being copy and paste shows that overpopulate the list of seasonal anime. You guys know how the 8 billionth person was born just a little while ago? Yeah, the amount of isekai shows have probably surpassed that number by now. For those who don't know what the isekai genre is, the name is a Japanese word that roughly translates to generic brown or black haired male protagonist is sent into a fantasy world in which every female character is a walking pair of abnormally sized tits whose only personality is wanting to fuck the main character. Uh, don't look that up, just uh, trust me on this one. However, this anime looked too enticing to just skip over, so I gave in to Temptation and watched it. And it was pretty good. It was far from being a perfect show, especially due to reasons I'll get into later, but I can say with confidence that I enjoyed it. The story starts out with our main character, Anus Sniffer, or Anus for short, apparently being transported into a magical kingdom, something that I completely missed on my first watch. That's how forgettable the isekai elements of the series are. It's honestly kind of funny when I remember that the series is technically an isekai, because aside from the title, the confusing reincarnation scene at the beginning, and a small part of the end that you could easily miss, there's practically no mention of reincarnation or anything. Like I said, I genuinely didn't even notice the whole reincarnation scene in the first episode, and I only realized what it was because I rewatched the first four episodes with my friend, who is a lesbian that enjoys GLs, and I really wanted to see her reaction. Uh, pointing it out to me. Oh, and she was also in that one video I made about the Violent Evergarden movie. Uh, link in description. This was so funny to me because on one hand, I was glad they just brushed off the whole thing because I'm so tired of generic isekai plots. But at the same time, I'm like, that's it? The word reincarnated is in the fucking title of the show and they mention it for like less than a minute. You know that one Drew Gooden video where he talks about that Daddy Can't Dance movie and says that the movie would still make sense if they removed the weird scene at the beginning and the crazy ending? Yeah, that's how I feel about this show. Also, I hope at least one person got that reference because if no one did, then I'd just embarrass myself to hundreds of potential viewers. Uh, great job, disaster. Anyways, Anus is reincarnated as a princess in a magical kingdom. 
Her family consists of her dad, whose name I forgot, her annoying fucking brother, Al, and her mom, Wendy, from Wendy's. Anna Sniffer was supposed to be next in line for the throne, but here's the thing. She's a little quirky. You see, she's not like other girls because she likes monster hunting and invented this new concept called magicology, not to be confused with Scientology, which was created by a different Anna Sniffer because she can't use regular magic. Needless to say, her dad is pretty pissed about her lifestyle, and since she refuses to become queen, her brother is set to become the king. Her brother is also set to marry Euphelia, a combination of the name Euphemia from Code Geass and Pedophilia, a term commonly associated with Evangelion fans. Euphelia is the princess of another kingdom, uh, well, that is at least, until Al publicly annuls their marriage at a party with hundreds of people and announces his plans to marry a commoner. Euphelia never really wanted to get married to Al in the first place, but since it's for the sake of their family, she's like, hey, what the fuck? And Al responds to this very valid question by making shit up about Euphie and gaslighting everyone into believing that she's the villain here. See what I mean about Al? This dude's a fucking bitch. Also unrelated, but I just wanted to mention this comment that was on the uh, video that I got this clip from really quick because oh my god it is so funny to me because it's so true like every single show i've seen that has like rich people parties literally is perfectly described by this comment and it is so funny to me uh that's all though anyways this obviously leaves everyone in shock especially yuffie of course when all of a sudden anus comes crashing through one of the banquet hall windows magicology style um, and you may be wondering, after such like, a, you know, a weird entrance, she must, you know, like, say something to Yuffie that's like, clever and well thought out, right? Um, so I'll give you A and B, two choices, and you can guess what she said. A is I'll take you under my wing and let you be an apprentice, and B is I'll allow you to live with me until this whole situation dies down. Uh, make your guesses. All right, done. Uh, if you guessed either of those, you're wrong, because what she actually says is, I'll kidnap you. <laughs> Anyways, Anus successfully hashtag secures the bag and flies both her and Yuffie back to her home on her broom. And that's the first episode. The first episode was honestly great at establishing both the story and the tone of the series, and I really enjoyed it. I mean, it's usually a good sign when the description of the first episode also works as the synopsis of the series. I'll go further into the story later on when I sort of get into the spoiler territory, but for now, let's move on to the characters. I really love the main character, Anus. Yes, I'm going to keep calling her that, fuck you. As established in the first episode, she's a cheerful and carefree girl who does what she wants and doesn't let her status as a princess dictate what she can and can't do. Of course, since this is a GL, she is a lesbian, and her coming out scene was fucking hilarious. Yuffie is Anus' love interest. Yes, you heard that correctly, love interest. Anus quite literally stole her brother's bitch, and she's so fucking real for that. As opposed to Anus, Yuffie is more confined to her royal duties, and is a lot more hesitant about disobeying the rules. However, with the help of, um, Anus, she slowly but surely starts becoming her own person. Also, let me just say, I really loved the relationship between these two. Anus is loud, brash, and very open about her sexuality, whereas Yuffie is shy, reserved, and more refined, which is like one of my favorite dynamics ever. It results in a lot of adorable and funny moments, especially in the first four episodes. As for the side characters, you have Anus's family, Yuffie's dad, question mark, Tilty, Ilya, Lainey, and Lumi. Anus's brother is, well, an asshole, but he's supposed to be. He serves as the primary antagonist for a good portion of the series, and I thought he was a solid villain. Anus's mom might have been a good character, but I was too distracted by the fact that she looked like the Wendy's mascot to pay attention to her. And then you have Anus's dad and Yuffie's dad, who I am still trying to get a read on. I genuinely cannot tell if the show was trying to portray them as good or bad. Like, in one scene, the show will be like, hey, these guys are cool and funny. And then in the next scene, it'll be like, ooh, maybe they're physically abusive, maybe they're not. Clearly, the author of this series struggles with keeping track of their characters' personalities because this is not the only instance of that. In fact, it's not even the strangest one, but more on that later. Tilty was a great character that was kind of similar to Ryo from Bochi the Rock, and I really wish she was in the show more. 
However, she was still in the show a fair amount, and I thoroughly enjoyed her interactions with the other characters. Ilya was also awesome. She's Anus's maiden caretaker, and while she's kind and reliable, she also serves as the provider of a lot of funny snark commentary. Lainey is the girl that Al fucked Yuffie over for, and I expected to hate her, but she was actually a really cute character. The whole thing is, she's not to blame for the whole Al incident, but I can't get into why due to spoiler reasons. And finally, we have Lumi, who was introduced later in the series. That is all I'm going to say for my description of her, because I can't say anything else without going into spoiler territory, and also there's nothing else to say about her because she's very boring. Now let's move on to talking about the art and music. The art wasn't anything too special and the music wasn't really anything too remarkable either, but both were good. I really did like the character designs though. And that is all of the basic stuff that I wanted to talk about. However, there's still a lot more I wanted to talk about in terms of the story. Unfortunately, I can't really go into detail about it without going into huge but still sizable spoiler territory, so if you haven't seen the anime and still plan to watch it, then I would highly recommend clicking off now, and I'll give you a few seconds to do so. Okay, so I really, really want to enjoy this show in its entirety. After the first four episodes, I had the series rated as a 9 out of 10, and I was really excited for the new episode to drop. But unfortunately, even with its strong start, after episode 4, the show started going downhill. I still enjoyed the rest of the show for the most part, but by episode 9, I stopped getting excited for the new episodes. And the final arc, which consisted of episodes 10 through 12, was beyond boring. Episode 10 was where the show sort of stopped being an action fantasy slash GL and turned into a stupid political drama that was so hard to sit through. After the final battle between Anus and Al in episode 9, which was really well done, Al is revoked of his right to the throne, meaning that Anus becomes next in line again. Of course, since Anus is a free spirit, she doesn't want to become the princess and Yuffie doesn't want her to either. Yuffie really wants to take her place and that's where Lumi comes in and introduces this stupid deal with the devil subplot that literally goes nowhere. I really enjoyed this show, I did, but it went from being a fantastic GL that I could hardly wait to see more episodes of, to a more plot focused action fantasy, to a shoehorned in political drama that was a complete slog to sit through. Speaking of being shoehorned in, way too many parts of this show were. I'm not gonna lie, I was mainly just watching the show to see Anus and Yuffie end up together, and while I enjoyed quite a bit of the other stuff, I could not bring myself to give half a shit about whatever the fuck they had going on later in the series. The political drama arc, the whole soul collector Lumi side plot, the whole reincarnation thing, all of it just felt like it was tossed in for no reason. But the absolute worst part of the last three episodes was the absolute retcon of Anus' character. She goes from being a free-spirited girl who doesn't care what people think of her and doesn't want to be restrained to her royal duties, to a girl who cares what people think of her and is restrained by her royal duties. She and Yuffie also barely interact in this arc, which is like, the reason everyone was still watching the show. I like this show, but god, is it really that hard to not butcher a character? You know, especially the main one? In the end, Yuffie ends up being crowned princess with Anus as her right hand woman, and they begin the revolution that they wanted to start. It's a very satisfying ending, and yes, Anus and Yuffie do end up together, and it's very cute. But not even that's all well and good. In the first four episodes, Anus is established as being very open about her sexuality and feelings for Yuffie, whether it's through flirting with her, teasing her, or, you know, outright declaring her love for her. Yet in the last episode, she turns into an embarrassed and flustered character out of literally nowhere? I'm sorry. I know it's not that big of a deal, and I'm more than satisfied with the fact that they ended up together, but I cannot get over it. And also, please don't misinterpret this as me going like, grr, she's supposed to be the dominant one, this makes me angry, because I promise that is not at all what I'm trying to say. All I'm trying to say is that it makes zero sense that she goes from literally declaring her love for Yuffie on multiple occasions during the earlier part of the series, to getting embarrassed and flustered when Yuffie does the same thing at the end of the series? I swear to fucking god, they did a total 180 with her character. Anyways, that's all I had to say about this anime. Sorry for getting so ranty near the end there. All in all, I really did enjoy this show, and even the weaker parts of it had some entertaining moments. 
It's just that this show had the potential to be one of the greatest romance anime ever, and I really wanted to keep thinking that, but there were a few too many flaws and hiccups that hindered my enjoyment of it. I would personally rate The Magical Revolution a 7 out of 10, because I still did really like the series, it just failed to keep being a 9 out of 10. Anyways, that's all I have to say, so thank you guys so much for watching, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing because it all really helps me out, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Have a great day, and bye. Hey everyone, once again, thank you all so much for watching, it really means a lot uh, that I have so many people watching my videos, I put a lot of work into them. My main goal with them is wanting people to see and enjoy them, so it really makes me happy. Uh, I have a pretty exciting announcement that I can't reveal just yet, but all I want to say is that I have a huge project coming up, hopefully soon, so I hope you will be looking forward to that. Um, and obviously, subscribe if you want to see it and you aren't subscribed already. Uh, thanks, secret scene soon, bye. Oh shit, I didn't know historians wrote this show.